Okay, start streaming. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm not sure yet if you've actually, if anybody's in the room and that I've actually connected properly. So I'm going to kind of wait. Hi, Judy. Can you hear me? Is it coming through okay? I'm a bit worried that you're going to be getting a bit delayed and you'll be hearing <laughs> me rather stressed, but I didn't realise it was recording at that point, so I do apologise. Hi, Marino. Hello, Martin. We're here. Hi, hi, Casper. Judy, yes, I can hear you. Cool. Hi, Patricia. Good, you're all here. Fantastic. I'm going to... Oh, I've got to turn off. Okay, I've turned off my audio. So you won't get that feedback of me talking coming back on the uh, computer. I'm sorry about that. Hi, Calamity. Hi, Pernicious. Renia. Patrick, you're getting your voice. Yeah, it's all sorted now. I've just turned it off. Hi, Fiona. Northern Birder. Hello there, mate. Are you all right? Up north. That's good to hear. see you here. Oh, we're not answer. In the Atlantic, kind of still snow on the ground. Wow, that's good. We've had a lovely sunny day here today, so that's really nice. Okay, so the the feed should settle down now, and you shouldn't be getting any um, stress moments of me talking, not realizing I'm on cam, or, you know, on live. So I apologize for that. Um, but anyway, we're here now. Can can everybody see the paper? Okay. On the, uh, can they all see what I'm doing? Hi, Giselle, Mar Maria. Welcome from Argentina. That's amazing. I'm glad you can come here tonight. That's fantastic. Can you all see the uh, the, the painting? Okay, what I'm going to do tonight. Can you see that? Lucia. Lucia, wow! Hi from hi from Spain. That's great. Yes, 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 yes. Yep, you can all see it. Brilliant. That's good. Okay, I'm going to jump straight into it because it's obviously a whole painting, and uh, it's going to take a little while to paint. So you're going to have to bear with me. I might not get the whole thing completed tonight, but I'll get a, I'll get the ground down and everything else that you know will call it a painting if you like but uh yeah can see okay fantastic glad you're gonna see that's good right so i've got my palette of colors so i'm just gonna stick that under the camera there so you can see what i got i'm going to be painting with quite a minimal palette tonight i'm not going to be going um too crazy with colors maybe sort of probably i'll be using the raw sienna and uh, the cobalt blue, um, some permanent rose, cadmium yellow, and maybe a bit of ultramarine, and maybe for shallows a bit of Prussian blue, that type of thing. But it's not going to be a huge palette of colours. I won't use everything that's in the um, in the palette today. Not sure if I can see the bottom. Move it up a little bit. Thought you wouldn't. Yeah, you can see. It. Oh, okay, Casper. Right. So let's have a look. It's a bit of a delay on that, so I'll have to wait for it to alter on the screen. Audio is a bit quiet. Okay, let's try and turn the audio up a bit. Thanks, Martin. Um, settings. Oh, hang on. Okay, is the audio any better now? Boost your audio, Patrick. Is it any better, the audio? Because that's on full. Audio's a bit quiet. Jesus. 
Anybody here? Yeah. That's better, is it? That's fantastic. Good. I've got it on full now. So it was on three quarters before, but now it's wound right up to the top. So I can't go any higher. I am you. This is my normal voice, Patricia. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this is how it is. Inserting using the bait cutter. Interesting use, seeing using a bait cutter is like kind of, Yeah. That's slightly better. Okay, so for, obviously, first of all, I'm going to start with the sky. That's going to be our first sort of, um, and because I want to, because if I paint, if I paint the sky in a grey day, the the castle itself is going to have no shadow and it's going to look pretty flat. So, I'm, I'm, what I want to do is I want to create some light within the painting. So I'm obviously going to think about. Because if you're doing a painting to sell to somebody or to make as a present to somebody, you want to make it cheerful. You don't want to make it dull and uninteresting looking. So I'm going to paint it with a kind of a cloudy blue sky. Um, I'm going to be very loose with this as well because it's really important in the time that we've got to do that. So I start off with my trusted sort of spritzer bottle. Very nice of you, good to hear. And uh, I'm going to spray the, uh, the 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 paper. Just mist it slightly, and all that does really, it just helps the wash move down the page. It doesn't do any more than that. It's just a very very fine mist over the paper. I'm painting on Arsh 140 pound watercolor paper, and it's a not surface, so it's kind of in between hot pressed and rough. If you like, it's a uh, mid mid paper, and I will opt for some cerulean blue because I operate on a limited palette. You'll see the same colours come out time after time. I'm not going to be sort of constantly, uh, you know, I don't have lots of colours basically because if I'm outside painting, I like the uh, the simplicity of it basically. Some cobalt blue there, all right. So I've missed in my paper, and now what I want to do is create some cloud shapes. And what I do for that is I pick the paint up on the side of my brush and I basically just draw in the shapes randomly. Nothing too much. You've got to be careful. You've got to know when to stop because it's easy to start, sort of. And then what I'm doing, I've rinsed the brush out again and I'm just softening the edges in places to get a nice soft look to the clouds. There we go. Take some down there. Now I'm going to add a little bit of permanent rose to the mix. And it's there with a little bit of cadmium yellow, just a little bit of warmth, just to add to the clouds. Like so. Now, wh where I'm facing, I can't actually see the, the comments. <laughs> so, I've got to stop and look round to see the comments, so can you just bear that in mind? But I have to stop. Right, so then I'm going to mix a little bit of the permanent rose with some cadmium yellow. And I want to make it like a nice warm grey colour, something like that, purpley grey colour. And I'm just going to put a little bit of... Uh, shadow on the clouds just so they look like they're hanging there is it okay oh. they're just hanging there in midair basically and quite honestly for tonight that's going to be as far as the sky is going to go because just draw the blue down there and that's fine Lift it out. 
Okay. So there's our very simple sky. I might just go back in here, just put a bit more blue in the top. It's still wet, so it's safe to do that. Now we've got a little distant islands in the background, hills in the background. Okay, so what I want to do now, oh, put some blue on there, is paint those in. And for that, for the distant, distant hot, uh, mountains in the background, I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, cobalt blue, maybe just a little bit of cadmium yellow. But I'm not going to mix it all in the palette, I'm going to keep it separated. So I've got a little bit of green mix and a little bit of blue mix so I can sort of pull into it when I want to. I don't have to uh, mix it all together to make one colour. I can sort of draw from each side of the palette when I want. So this is basically the diff distant hills. And of course they're in a bluer colour because uh, they're far away. And we want to make it look kind of uh, dreamy. I've got the picture on the laptop there, which I'm copying. And we can sort of like strengthen those up later. But the first wash is fine for that. It's, uh, and then I'm going to carry on the water. Down past the rocks. A little bit of green in it there, just to change it slightly. Hi Patrick, good to see you're coming. Hiya Carol, nice to see you here tonight. And a hi Essie, nice to see you too. People that have always commented on my work and I really appreciate that. Thank you both very much. Right, I'm just getting back into just softening these areas. Okay. Now in the foreground here, there's lots of, um, there's some yellow weed or something. Not sure what it is, but for that I'm just mixing some yellow, some cadmium yellow, and a little bit of uh, a little bit of cadmium red, and I'm just going to kind of like paint the blue first, obviously, the greeny blue, the water, create a bit of sparkle. And then I'm going to go in with the yellow. This is the seaweed that's uh, showing. At low water. And now I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to that mix. A little bit of burnt umber. Just to get that a little bit more burnt sunburn now, and a little bit of cobalt blue to the mix, just to give it a slightly darker tinge in places. Because later we'll be picking out the little stones and stuff, and we'll be dropping in the shadow there for the castle. Hi from Jersey. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. 
Nice to see you too. Boy, do I love your limited palette. Yeah, I, I, I really swear by a limited palette. That absolutely, it absolutely makes life so much easier. Right, so I now I just need to dry this off now. Because if I go into it with uh, more paint, then as I paint in the castle, obviously I'm going to run into the sky. So I need to really dry it off. So just wait while I use the hairdryer to get that dry. Okay, there we go. That's all not quite dry. Okay, just while that's um, cooling down, I'd just like to add, if you, if <laughs> before you leave tonight, if you check out the links under the video, there's all sorts of links there that take you to different things that I do. Most importantly, there's the Pure Watercolour website where uh, we have some fantastic challenges run by Martin, who is superb on the site and does all sorts of things for pure watercolour um, so that's always worth a visit uh, we've also got my uh, Udemy courses and my Skillshare courses on there at the moment um, and should you wish to see extra tutorials done by myself there's also my Patreon page which you can click on so should you wish to have a look at the links underneath um, at the end of the session feel free to do so Right, so now we need to move on with the painting because we're never going to get finished. Don't not sure how long we're into this. Oh, it's nice to see you here, Annette. Sorry, I didn't see you came into the. Uh, it's really nice to see you here. Another brilliant artist, Annette. Fantastic watercolour artist, and we all learn so much from her on pure watercolour. Right, so I'm going to actually now start painting the cottage, oh, well, the castle, sorry, not quite a cottage, is it? A bit more than that. And for that, I'm going to need to keep myself pretty much concentrated, I think. So I'm going to use some raw sienna for the cottage. You can see my mix there. With a little bit of uh, cobalt blue. And I'm just going to pull in from each colour. I'm not going to totally mix it together. Again, like the other colours, I'm going to use it just to mix. So I'm going to pull from the raw sienna and then pull from the cobalt blue. Just so I get a very wash through here. Because the castle itself is quite grey, but then it moves to a warmer colour as well. So we want to be kind of able to use both colours easily. So here we go. Paint around the windows at this time. Now I'm going to pull more towards the blue side, so I've shift from the warm to the blue, just going to pull. And again I'm going to go over to the warmer side now on this uh, 
end of the cottage, which eventually will be in shadow. Can't kind of work out what colour the roof is. It's more of a blue. And then we'll just put the chimney in at the same time. That's fine. And again, moving over towards the warmer side. So basically, it's a bit of cool and a bit of warm colour just to uh, to make it interesting, really. Here's the door. job to see with the lights on the table. What I'll do at the end, I'll ask, obviously, when I can look at the screen myself, I'll make a point of uh, asking questions. If anybody wants to make a note of anything they want to ask, then probably best when I take a break I can uh, ask the question and I can't keep swiveling the head so I've tried to make that sort of wash go across the page but I've tried to vary it as I go and what will make it really interesting is uh, when you start applying the shadows to uh, we hope um, just going to put the roof in as well on here like that so really you do lose a lot of the information at this point because we haven't actually picked out any of the detail. Right. So let's move on to the, because uh, I'm mindful about time. Let's go on to the detail. Let's go on to the grass, I mean. So for that, it's just a bit of lemon yellow, cobalt blue, and just a touch of red to knock it back a little bit. So it's a little bit more natural in colour. Um, now I've got to refer to the. I'm just gonna paint in the grass. It's a bit of lemon yellow. So I'm trying to bury that a bit. So I'm also to bury it, I'll put a bit more blue in it, just so we don't keep the same colours running through the whole theme. Because watercolour is all about, it's, it, what makes a painting interesting is obviously the variation in colour. If you use the same green throughout, then it becomes a little bit boring to look at. So I've gone over the wall there, so that's a mistake. So I'll lift that colour out there. So it's not the end. If you make a mistake, you can always go back. So I'm just lifting out where I went over the wall. 
And we just carry on through. Down there. Okay, now I need to just paint in these rocks along here. And for that I'm using some cobalt blue and a bit of burnt sienna, just to make a light grey colour. Got some rocks here. I'll just place those in. Some are bluer than others, some are greyer than others. So you need to be And then for where it meets the water line through here, it becomes a bit darker again. And for that, I'm just some cobalt blue and a little bit of cadmium red. I don't want to go too dark, and I want to keep it more on the purpley side than the blacky side. So let's just see what happens. Bearing in mind that obviously I'm trying to paint this quite a big picture. Just adding a bit of burnt sienna to it as well to warm it up. Sorry, raw sienna. Just again so we don't keep the same colours. So basically we've got the first wash done on there, but what we need to do, make it look easy. Well, thanks, Anne. Doesn't feel very easy tonight. Lifting out, I mean. Yeah, I had to lift out here, Margaret. Was it Margaret? Margaret, because I actually went over the wall with the green. So I just used a damp brush to lift out the green um, so I could put the wall colour in later. We have a little bit of shadow here. Okay, so I think we should go back to the hills now and get that in because how long we've been running? Anybody can tell me the time, how long we've been going tonight? So I want to keep it under an hour if possible. Colours don't look so good on here, I must say. The colours don't look so warm on the screen as they do in the painting. The greens look dead on the screen. What I'll do is obviously after the after the demonstration's finished, I'll take a paint a photograph and include it in the video so you can see the true colours because the screen is 29 minutes. Thanks, Martin. 30 minutes, yeah, it looks dead on the screen. It looks absolutely dead. Let me just try and turn the colours up a bit on the screen because that doesn't look good. Um, advanced settings. Color intensity. Not that one. Color intensity. Control. Uh, 
They are, Anne, but believe me, they look better <laughs> on the page. But maybe as I start putting more colour on, they all come together. Okay, let's 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 not worry about that because I can put a photograph of the painting on at the end. Okay, I, it's a bit disappointing that they actually show so weak on the camera, but it's something I have to work on. Um, let's we'll concentrate now on the on the distant hills because that will be the next thing to do and for that I'm just going to mix some cobalt blue with a little bit of permanent rose make a purpley type colour and I might have a little bit of cadmium yellow in there as well just so I can switch it to a more neutral colour if I want to Actually, I think it might be the white balance that's causing causing this problem. What do you reckon, Patricia? White balance or uh, what? Okay, so I'm just mixing the colours on the page and seeing how they go on. Then with the distant island, the one that's right in the distance, distance. A little bit of cobalt blue, permanent rose. And I'm just going to keep that really simple because. Time is of an essence. Okay. There's a little bit of an island that runs through here. You can just see in the distance. So we'll just paint that in. Bit of a headland, bit of a mountain. It runs there. I want to mix some thicker colour up now, so I want some thicker cobalt blue. And a bit of permanent rose. Just to pull out some trees that are on the shoreline here. And I'm just dabbing those in. And that's just cobalt blue, um, permanent rose, and a little bit of cadmium yellow just to indicate the little trees on the shoreline but they're very soft you know they don't need to be painted hard so they stand out and then we can just draw their reflection down into the water by just just like that letting them run into the water essentially but the the island here i'm not going to touch anymore i could play around with that but for a, for a quick painting I don't really want to. Oh, that's good, Randy. I'm pleased you managed to get a better video quality. Right, so now I need to start putting some shadows on the castle. Okay, now the light source is coming from the left, so all this end here is going to be in shadow. Okay, so let's have a little just dry it a moment. I'm not sure it's dry. Hmm. Okay, that's dry. 
can see the neighbors it's the same patch always give the way you change the colors thanks Carol I, re I appreciate your comment it really is not looking a million dollars tonight I would agree but uh, hey we can only do what we can do Right, so I want to start putting the shadows in on the castle now and hopefully that's going to make it come to life a little bit because at the moment it's looking pretty naff. I would agree. So this is when you mustn't give up hope on your painting. <laughs> when you look at your painting and you think, oh my God, what a mess. This is the time to persevere. Capturing good colour and live video. It's not easy and the video is fine. Look at the contrast from clip. And click a white balance before starting calibrating the camera. Oh, thanks, Ian. I'll, I'll take that information on board, and next time I get round to, you know, obviously next time I do a live uh, stream, I will make sure I do that. It's all so much a learning curve at the moment, so much to take in, that uh, it's quite hard, as you can imagine. So, just get back to the painting. For the shadows, I'm going to mix some um, raw sienna, some. I've got some light red, cadmium red in there, some cobalt blue, and I'm mixing a really neutrally warm grey. I guess it's warm, I don't really know, but add more blue and it'll go cooler. And I just want to pop these shadows in. I want the shadow on the end of this cottage to be quite well defined, and then it casts a shadow over the walls here. And hopefully that will bring some light in, life into the actual painting itself. But we will see. It might not. So here goes the shadows. I have a I have a job to see what I'm painting due to the reflections of the lights. There's always a trade-off, isn't there? Now I want to just draw some of that shadow under the eaves of the cottage, under the eaves of the castle there. Just to, uh, and also on the chimney, that side, and the chimney casts a rather nice shadow on the roof. So I'm going to keep the shadow going down, and then it kind of casts a nice shadow. Bit more blue, running out of blue. Blue will save the day. And then just make some hard and soft edges. You know, I haven't talked about hard and soft edges yet much because. shadow in there and there's just little bits of shadow now and again and I'm just going to pull them out as I see them and then we've got this end of the cottage as well and all the bits in between. I'm not going to mess about too much. I've got some idea. Shadow on that end. That's a bit clumsy. Big splodge of paint. And the 
some shadow down down there. So we've got some little turrets here with some shadow on them. I wish I could see what they are. And we've got a wall down here with the blossom. And the shadow fades as it goes around the corner. So I'm just using the brush to soften that edge as it goes around the corner. Yeah, when you start adding the shadows, things start to come alive a bit more. It's always, often I hear from people say that, oh, they give up on a painting because uh, it's not, it's not come to, I said, well, have you put the shadows in yet? Have you created the light source? And they'll say, well, no. Well, well that might have something to do with it because a painting will look very flat until you actually um, create the light source. Now I could spend probably a good hour on this painting now and it would all of a sudden, I could draw the shadows out a lot more and believe me it would come alive. Um, an hour is not very long to describe a painting basically. So yeah, it's all about uh, time. Put the windows in there. Excuse my throat. <coughs> <clears throat> have a drink. Put those windows in there. There's little windows in there. There's some shadows up here on the roof, which I'm just going to roughly put in. Because time, I'll have a bring the windows there. But that gives you an idea with the cottage, uh, with the uh, the castle. I could spend a lot longer, obviously, and. Uh, have time. So I want to go back to the greens now and pull some of these greens out on the painting. So I've just basically mixed some cobalt blue with some um, cadmium yellow and a little bit of uh, uh, permanent rose and I'm just going to start putting some you know some shadows in just trying to make some interest because at the moment like we said it looks pretty flat And I'm not trying to paint every blade of grass. It's just uh, a splodge with a brush, really, to pull out the different shapes. Honestly, Essie, it isn't that difficult, really, to be honest. It's just having the knowing what works because this isn't obviously a particularly good example of a painting in the sense of that if I spent, if you, any, any artist spent any decent amount of time on a picture, then you could do all sorts of things. But when you've got a limited amount of time, you're going to, you need to just suggest things. And I think what I like about these quick paintings, it shows you what you can actually achieve with, with um, just suggesting things in painting. Oh, I just wish the colours had come out more on the screen because you're not actually getting the full benefit of what I can see here. I'm not saying, it's not saying it's a hundred times better, but it is a little marginally better than what you're viewing. I need to address that. Um, so I just want to put in the shadows here on the rocks as well because they need some definition and I'm just basically it's the same mix as I used to paint them with just a little bit darker and I'm just using the just pulling it out and I want to put the reflection in of the castle and the water I'm sure you're all waiting for that um, So 
So I'm just going to put that in now. So this is all about, again, softening edges and uh, So again, we'll see. Yeah, the contrast. I'm sure it's the best part of the darks. Go for it, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, the best parts are the darks. I always say that. It's definitely when you actually start adding the darks that you feel kind of relieved. It's reasonably acceptable. But a lot of people don't get to that stage where they actually get to add the darks. They kind of like give up. They say, oh, no, you know, it's not working out because it looks so flat. But it really is the darks that make the lights and uh, it's really worth, I'm just going to put the wall in now. And that's just a mixture of the same colour, occasionally a bit of blue in. There we go, that's the wall. Maybe we'll just um, going to put a little bit more um, definition in the water, just to uh, make that foreground a bit stronger, basically. Okay. Gosh. So there we go, really. Oh, hang on. Let's just um, put in a few rocks in the foreground because they're quite important. Just at the low water mark, put those in. They're just showing through the water. This part of the dark. What size brush? What size? This brush that I'm using here is a size five round. So I guess the other two I was using, that would be about uh, I don't know a six or seven, and that would be about an eight, about a size eight, I guess. So uh, yeah, and that's the three brushes I use tonight. For this this painting, I'm just going to see if I can just alter the contrast on it, just so you can get a better idea of the colour. I'm bloody disappointed in the colour. 
advanced setting. Okay, thank you very, very, very special. You're welcome, I see the colours as you I do feel tonight's wasn't a very successful demo, so I do apologise for that, but I, I do hope you've got a rough idea. Obviously, um, it would be, if I was painting it for myself, it would be done a lot slower than that. But I just want to give you an idea how I actually get the shadows in. And, um, you know, you can benefit from that, I guess. But uh, I would recommend you spend longer than I did. <laughs> it made the colour better. That's good, Terry. Thank you for that. I also just up the colours a little bit. And I don't know if it's come any stronger through. Sure. Yeah, I can take the tape up, yeah. Let me just dry it first, and then I'll lift the tape. So I'm just going to lift the tape up as I uh, was asked to do, just hopefully it won't rip the painting. Bear with me a second. <laughs> Bear with me a second. Let me just get that up. Thanks, Annette. I can always rely on you to build my ego up. <laughs> Thank you. But it is all about simplicity, and that's what I was going for, really. And I probably don't convey that in a way which is easy to understand in some painting. But I just wanted to get across the simplicity of it. Do you know what I mean? And... Uh, how watercolor you can capture so much in watercolor in such a short time and that is the beauty and the excitement of watercolor painting really oh that's fantastic mark i'm pleased to hear it mate not to yeah that's good that's what you said me we'll post up Great, look forward to seeing it, Pure Watercolour, when you finished it, Mark, that would be great. Have a lots of fans, Florida, we love it. Well, that could well be a possibility, you never know. But, uh, Carol, I may well do that. Francois, looks very good, looks very good. Thank you, Francois. Indeed, like for you, you succeeded. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Uh, you're very kind. Yes, it's amazing. Well, that's great. I'm really pleased you all enjoyed it. Um, 
if anybody has any specific questions they want to ask, please feel free to ask them uh, before I log off. Um, but uh, you probably asked them. I probably missed it when I was painting. But um, I'm sure I can get this actually tuned in a bit better in future so it works a bit better. Barbara said, OK, Anne. Yeah, thank you very much. So we're nearly at the hour. No questions from anyone? Like how tall am I or something? I don't know. Yes, Bob. <laughs> what camera do you use? Good question, Ian. I'm using the... Um, what camera is it? It's the Logitech, their latest webcam. Um, it... It works, um, it's a 922, I think it is. It's the latest one anyway. Were you watching an image while you were painting? Yeah, yes, I was watching an image as I was painting. Um, I painted it very loosely to the image because the image was very flat and didn't have a lot of light in it. So I created a light source to make the painting more interesting. When did the second wash on the house? When did, did the second wash? No, when I did the second wash on the house, the paper was dry. It's essentially, you know, you've got to get the patience to wait for the paper to dry, because if you don't, when you when you apply the subsequent washes, obviously they'll bleed out and it won't work. Thanks, Maria. It's very kind of you. How tall? <laughs> Six foot three, Martin. Was this from your trip? No, this wasn't from my trip. Uh, Essie, this was from Pixabay. <laughs> Thank God for Pixabay. Uh, and use cobalt blue. How did you tone it down? Um, I usually tone uh, cobalt blue down. So if I want to have a, like a blue grey, I'll use cobalt blue, um, something like cadmium red or permanent um, rose or something like that, depending on how bright I want it. And then I just put a touch of yellow in it to tone it down. You're more than welcome, Margaret. Thank you very much for coming by tonight and watching the uh, demo the image you used. Um, I can try my best. Hang on a second. Wait with me. Right, that's the. Uh, you might be able to see that. I don't know. So we'll just try. It's on another laptop, but we'll try. Terry, so I'll be able to watch this from the beginning once you. Yes, uh, Terry, you can watch it from the beginning once we've. Uh, stop recordings. It will be on uh, YouTube. Yeah, thanks Ian. I will do that. Um, there's the image I used tonight. Obviously, I, I, I zoomed in on the castle itself because I didn't want, because it would have been too small to paint if I'd inclu included the bridge and everything. It would have been too small. Um, so I, I sort of zoomed in on the castle a bit, but it gives you a rough idea. Six foot three. You... <laughs> Thanks, Mark. You're a friend for life. Yeah. yeah. Have you got a I've got that picture. Yeah, it's a nice picture, Ian, isn't it? Very nice. There's loads on. I really recommend Pixabay because obviously it's all royalty free. Um, just buy the guys a coffee or something if you uh, choose to use one or use a load. I like yours, but wow, well, SE, thank you very much. Like I said, I did enhance the light a little bit and made it look a little bit more wonky, but uh, that's what we do. Is that that is a quarter sheet? Yes, uh, Judy, a quarter sheet imperial of one forty ash watercolor paper. PD got revelation. <laughs> What's well, the revelation? I wonder. Okay then, guys. Uh, my 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 voice because I've got a shout to try and get the uh, volume up on this mic for some reason. So I'm just about done here. Uh, it's been great chatting to you all. 
you've changed the composition for the better. Yeah, I just think it needed to be honed in on uh, the, the castle as it being lost. But I really, a big thanks to you all for joining in and, and being so friendly and sort of asking so many questions. It makes it all worthwhile. So I really appreciate that. Um, don't forget to come on to Pure Watercolour because, like I said, we have some fantastic challenges arranged by uh, Martin, Elizabeth Portal. Um, so please come along and uh, join us at the site because we're a great bunch and we have a really good time sharing our art and whatnot. So, yeah, bye, SC. Uh, nice to see you. I hope to see you again on another one soon. So thanks ever so much, everyone. Um, I'll log off now, but... Uh, it's been a great experience. <laughs> Lost a few pounds in this experience, I think, but uh, go have a beer now. Cheers. Thanks, Fiona. I certainly will. So let's see if I can log off without making a mess of this. So bye for now. Keep the live video. Yep. Uh, jo Josie job. Yep. I will keep the live video definitely. <coughs> think about a clip. Good idea, Ian. Yeah, clip mic. That is definitely next thing on the shopping list, so I will get that. That's uh, a definite. Would make things a lot easier. Okay, guys. Um, how do I actually finish it? Um, okay, yeah, stop stream. Okay, so thanks ever so much, and I look forward to seeing, speaking to you all again soon. So come along to Pure Watercolour and check the links out under the video. So bye for now, and thanks very much.